When we made the Rio album, we were all terrified of the success of the first album. And we thought, how on earth are we going to top that? Writing new songs, you know, year in, year out, that people are going to buy, you know, and put into the charts. That's the tough bit. And if this one didn't work, then we could just become another of the thousands of, you know, one hit wonders or one album wonders. And each time being aware that, wow, you know, we got to top something this time, which you never think of when you, when you make your first album. And we really saw it as being the most important thing in our careers. video idea this still didn't gel with me, but the managers that we had were very aware of what was going on. And I guess they well they could see the big picture and they could see that actually these little mini movies that we were making for the songs were really working for the band. They re-released Hungry Like the Wolf uh, when it when it started getting played more on MTV. US radio wasn't interested at all. They didn't want any, they didn't want to know about any new sounds or new styles. They wanted to play Stairway to Heaven 10 times a day. And we'd gone back to England thinking, oh well, maybe, maybe the third album, and suddenly the thing exploded. We felt we could we could cope with it. Um, it was only after that massive tour, the one we call the Sing Blue Silver Tour, um, that everything started to get a bit shaky. Then in 1985, the business was taking over the band. Suddenly, there was a lot of accountants and lawyers involved, and we just all stopped and said, hey, wait a minute, you know, this has turned into a, a sort of corporation. It's got nothing to do with music at the moment. Well, terrible opportunists that we are. Um, John and I were at, uh, at, a, at a dinner once, and um, Cubby Broccoli, the producer of the James Bond movies, was there. And uh, I think we had a number one record at the time, so we went and told him and said, hey, we should really be doing your next soundtrack. And he said, okay. It was something John had particularly always wanted to do, you know, because of the notoriety of the Bond soundtracks, of which there have been some great ones, some great Shirley Bassey ones, and Nancy Sinatra, you know, and it was just something that we thought would be fun to do. We're trying to blend James Bond with Duran Duran. Um, and, uh, you know, in hindsight, I think we did a good job with that one. Excuse me, aren't you? Bon, Simon, LeBond. <laughs>